guys, uh, this be part five of how to play Blood Bowl, start to finish. Um, last video ran a little bit longer than I'd like, uh, so I'm going to focus on one action this time. And let's see how that goes. So today we're going to look at um, passing, the pass action, okay? Now, because we're talking about passing, uh, there's a couple of other actions that um, will, you know, that need to be d discussed also. But uh, really, we're going to just focus on passing. So, passing is basically whenever we have a player with a ball attempting to throw to another player, um, that is called the pass. We're allowed one pass per turn. And everybody on the team can pass. It's not like a typical NFL American football where um, your quarterback is usually the guy that's going to be passing the ball. Our thrower is um, actually uh, has a skill that helps him in passing, which is why he has the position of thrower. But that doesn't mean you can't pass with anybody else. Okay, so... I declare a pass with Ryder here, or thrower. Okay, he has possession of the ball, and my intended target is uh, Smith. Now, it's a simply uh, it's a simple agility check. Now, uh, our our thrower's agility is three, which means he needs a four up. Okay, there are modifiers, and this is a part where. Um, both positive and, and negative modifiers stack up uh, to help you decide the role of success. Now, a 6 is always success, and a 1 is always a fail, a fumble in this case. Uh, we'll go over inaccurate passes and fumbles in this part as well. So I'll try to cover all of that. So when I declare a pass, the pass has to happen at the end of my move. So you can move and pass, okay? And I could pass in any direction. I could also pass to an empty square. But bear in mind, if the ball hits the ground for any reason, because of a fumble or an inaccurate pass, or the catcher drops the ball, it's a turnover, and then, you know, the Skaven would then take over. So there's a... There is risk involved. Let's say that Ryder is at the end of his move. And he intends to pass to... Uh, what's this guy's name? Can't read it right now. Oh, Duckworth. Okay. So we lay the pass meter out. And you see there's a little hole. We can place the center of the model. And we'll see the different um, segments of the pass ruler. These also give you your modifiers. So quick pass is plus one. So with an agility of three, I would need a three or better. Because normally I need a four plus, I add plus one. That puts me at agility uh, four, which if we check on the agility table, four agility needs a three plus. Okay, short pass has no modifiers. Long pass is negative one. So you do the same thing. Um, my agility is normally three, but now with minus one, it's down to two, and I need a five plus. And then the long bomb is minus two, which brings my agility down all the way to one. I would need a six. But um, important thing to note, six is always a a success no matter how many negatives you have and one is always a fail no matter how many positives you have that's really the key here there are also other ways to, to affect this pass so if I am passing in enemy tackle zones here I'm in two enemy tackle zones I have to um, factor in another negative two to my roll. Okay? So they stack up. 
So you stack up all the negatives and positives. You come up with the uh, the uh, the correct dice roll you need, and then you roll the dice. Uh, for this example, we'll say he's not in any tackle zones, and he's going to pass to uh, Duckworth over there. He's going to need a five up. I roll a six. Okay. So pass is on target. Now the catch, you use pretty much the same scale. You take the, the uh, player's agility, which in this case is three, which is our whole team. So you know, probably get used to that. And so Duckworth needs a, a four plus, but because the pass is on target, you get a plus one to receive, to catch. So basically I need a three up, okay? Catching also has ways of uh, being modified. If I was in an opposing team's, uh, opposing player's tackle zone, I'd have to minus one. So in the same example, let's say the pass is still on target, I get a plus one for the accurate pass to catch it, but then I'd have to take away that plus one because I'm in a, a tackle zone. So that would give me plus zero, and so I would need a four. Now, I'm not in any tackle zones right now. I roll my four up. Ball is caught. Okay, so that is passing. Let's say I rolled, let's do this action all over again. Let's say I rolled a two, okay? Any dice roll that is modified down to a one would equal a fumble. So even though a one is a fumble, because I was minus one because of the range, a two would also mean a fumble. And what is a fumble? Basically that means that our thrower has dropped the ball somewhere adjacent to him. So this is where the eight-sided dice comes into play. You roll that, and we would con consult our scatter template, which is built in the board. So a four puts us right here. Okay, so that's a fumble. And then of course our turn ends and the Skaven have a shot at uh, recovering their, the ball. Now, let's say I rolled a three. Okay, so a three minus one is two, so it's not a fumble but it is not accurate. In this case, you're gonna scatter the ball three times, starting from its intended location. So we roll an eight, and we consult the scatter table. That would put the ball here, okay? Um, we roll it again. From there, we got a four. It goes back to that player. He doesn't have a shot yet to, now, let's go over that in a little bit. Three puts it here. Now, had the ball scattered back onto him, he would still have a chance to pick up, to catch the ball. He would have a second attempt at catching. Okay? Which means that if he had ca caught the ball, the ball didn't technically hit the ground, so it's not a turnover. I should also. Mention that your uh, thrower comes with the pass skill, which is a free reroll. So let's do the pass all over again. Same, same uh, thrower to same target. I roll a two. I could then use my pass skill to reroll. Five on target. If I didn't have the pass skill, I could use a team reroll to to re to reroll that result. So that in, a, in uh, its basic form is passing. There is one more thing I need to cover. And it actually fits into this example because if you look at, and I can't do this with two hands very neatly, but if we look at the, the path of the ball, the ruler crosses over an opponent's uh, square. When it does that, and it has to be, you know, between the two players. <clears throat> when that happens, the opponent can do an out-of-turn action, which is interception. 
This happens before any of the dice rolling on the human side begins. That's just how the rule is. They say it's simpler and easier. I'm not convinced of that. I still think uh, you should have the ability to see if he fumbles because um, he could fumble the ball. But um, having the interception happen before any of the dice rolls on the human team happen pretty much prevent him from fumbling if I roll this interception. So an interception is minus two to your agility. The Skaven's agility is three. So minus two would be one, which means he would need a six. Also, just like catching, uh, you minus for every opposing team's tackle zone. So actually, he's at minus three. But like I said, a six is always a success and a one is always a fail. So right now he would need a six. It never fails me that whenever the camera's on, uh, that rare interception will happen. So in this case, it's actually kind of cool that it happened. Uh, in this case, uh, the thrower th th threw the ball. I know he didn't roll it, but he did. Just for the fact that he declared the pass. And it happened, to, the pass ruler happened to touch the uh, Skaven lineman in the way. Um, Skaven is allowed his interception. So he snags the ball from the air, grabbing the ball and creating a turnover. So you can see that passing uh, has a lot of dice rolls involved in it, which means it has a lot of risks. But when it goes well, uh, it is a uh, it is a very cool thing because you can move that pigskin uh, very fast. So that's it. And again, I'm over my 10 limit, 10 minute projected time limit. But uh, I think I got everything covered. If any of you veteran blood ball players are watching and notice I made any mistakes or whatever, uh, let me know because I don't want to. Um, mislead anybody that is new and give them false information. But I will see you on the next episode, okay? See you later.